Hey everybody and welcome back to a brand new modeling video in Maya 2018. Well, today we're going to do a subscriber request that I got from one of my uh, Hangout group members and the topic of today is an anvil. Okay, so let's uh, jump in and check it out. Here we go. Alright guys, well, so many people ask me to model this anvil and because it's a pretty straightforward model as far as modeling techniques are concerned, I uh, decided to do a uh, time lapse with a narrative. Okay. Now here I'm uh, simply taking a polygon cube, fitting that to the bottom part of the, the right side there, and then extruding those faces upwards until we have that shape. I'm uh, extending it out a bit so I can flip it. And then I'm going to turn on my X-ray so I can go in and add edge loops that will allow me to move all the way up and uh, incorporate those curves on the side. Okay, so just adding a few edge loops there and just to work our way up. Adjust those. It's going to be smooth later, so um, you know, as long as you are pretty close to where you need to be, a few more up there. That looks all right. And then we're going to flip it over and we're going to look at the top view. And you see those two curved notches in there. Um, because of the way this reference is set up, it's pretty easy. So we're going to add in edge loops there as well. And we're basically just going to pull them in and adjust them. And as you can see, again, that is pretty straightforward. Now I did a quick preview smooth and you can see that it will need a few edges left and right to make sure that it holds that shape. And now we're going to go in and take that top uh, section there. That's a bit more tricky. Take a cone and then move the edges um, until they fit. And you cannot scale them in one direction. So I'm just uh, retrying this. Let's put it in again. So yeah, you're basically going to align that and you're going to scale them down from the middle and then move them up or down. I'm making them all level at the top there. So we can level that out, squish it in a bit. And then I can take the edge rows one by one, scale them down, move them up until they fit within the reference. To be honest, a shape I never really did before. So I had to kind of think about how to approach it. And I found that this works. Uh, Pretty good. All right, so just clean up that end there. Just get rid of those faces. No biggie. Yeah, there we go. Looks okay. Just to make sure that everything's aligned. So I square it up with the grid and the end piece as well. So I'm sure that it's in the middle there. Just clean it up a bit and scale it down slightly. So we've got a good fit. All right, not too bad. So what we need to do next is, <coughs> excuse me. What we need to do next is uh, make sure that we have um, uh, that little square section on the top of that cylindrical part and move that up and then just align those. So it's just extending uh, faces from that cylindrical part. Align them on the top, make sure it's uh, level and flat. Looks okay. Just checking it out left and right. And then we're gonna go in and add edge loops in areas where we want those hard edges to be hold, uh, or to be held, sorry, in that model um, when we smooth it out. Now, I don't really think it has to be smoothed out a lot, but you know, uh, just to make it look uh, cleaner. And there you have it. I think that looks okay. A few more. And that is starting to look like an anvil. Not too bad. Okay. Now I want to retopologize it in ZBrush and uh, texture it in Substance Painter. So I'm just going to save this guy out as an OBJ. And we're going to go into ZBrush and we're going to open that up. There it is. And while I'm looking at it, um, you know, the topology is not that bad. It's fairly high poly, but that's, you know, that's not an issue in this case because I'm not using it as a uh, low poly. And when I did the uh, remesh, I saw that it didn't improve. It actually became worse. So I decided to leave that alone. I did a quick UV here. And uh, for the simple reason that the entire model will have the exact same texture 
um, the automatic UV in ZBrush is fine. So what I'm doing is I'm uh, exporting the uh, low poly UV model and then I'm taking a copy of that low poly model, making that a high poly model so I can go in, take my trim dynamic brush and uh, you know give it some wear and tear, some uh, edges, some notches, some dents, scratches, whatnot. And uh, that's the part of the video where you would normally spend a lot of time doing that properly. I'm doing it uh, quickly and especially with time lapse. And now what I'm doing is I'm adding some noise in the surface menu. Be really subtle about that. Don't go crazy on it. Just a little bit. And when you apply something like this, not only hit OK, but make sure you click on Apply to Mesh. If you don't, it won't show up and you're wondering where they go. Okay. So now we're saving uh, out the high poly and that takes uh, a bit, as, as you can see. I think it's a 6 million count, so that's uh, quite a lot. So we'll give that a sec. Keep in mind, this is already at five speed, right? So, and when that's saved out, it's time to jump into Substance Painter. All right, guys, well, we're gonna load up our low poly model in a new scene and we're gonna go in and bake the initial textures and I'm gonna plug in the high poly model as well so we can bake the textures based on that. So you can see there's one texture set in the top right corner there. So I'm applying a, a normal steel material to this. And then as a second layer on top, I'm creating a painted layer, which right now is blue. So I'm going to change that to black. And uh, what you can do is use a white brush uh, because I applied a mask and uh, kind of scrub away paint in areas you want to. But I want to automate that process. So I'm going to apply a generator. And with that generator, I'm going to plug in a metal wear that will be applied based on the curve map that has been created, which will give you something like this. Well, that's basically all there's to it, guys. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, fairly simple uh, tutorial, but nevertheless, one that is requested a lot. Okay, so uh, have fun with that. If you got any questions, let me know as always. And uh, that said, thank you very, very much for watching and uh, see you guys next time with a very, very different tutorial. Okay, see you guys soon. Bye. Well, thanks for watching, and before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.